talking about living in the realm of my own thoughts, I was built from this particular poem. A mama has no shoulder to cry on, so she cries all night because she's a victim of the circumstance. In his drunken state, Ababa races her every night behind the master bedroom's closed doors where she whips her heart out in solitude. Her voice disappeared into the daily scream such that we can easily tell she's used to the bathroom by how courageously she faces every morning. It hurts us when we hear the sounds of her gasping for breath. She moans heavily but keeps her mouth shut from the constant reps so her mama still stays home and shuts the abuse behind those closed doors every day and feeds all nine of us with a proud but pale face and calls us her kids. And then she has the guts to teach us to be as brave as our Ababa is. She does nothing about his insolent acts as if she was told at a tender age to press herself for this ruthless condemned severity that Ababa always subjects her to under the principle of honoring the old Lobola did. You see, scars and bruises distorted our beautiful looks people jested about. Plus, being put to labor at the nip of her adolescence was the genesis of this ongoing brutal acts of Baba exposes her to. And on every Sunday afternoon after church, she sits us down and says, Go on are the times of the pains and the anger. The world is a debut, but we are smarter. Relationships are broken with the panga. We keep nurturing in no future but like our mother. Gone are the troubles of the world and tempered. Fetus ought to be relieved from the pains of a trapster. The dark and the shining have been castigating trauma. These are the cursed endeavors of my reasonable Amama. <laughs> Ababa has none to condemn his malpractice, so he does as he wishes. You see, 16 years down the lane, Amama has graduated into his punching bag that offers him daily strength. He says he's responsible for planning how many children they ought to have, so none should bore him with nonsense from the lazy whites. I mean, what is family planning? After all, he has his legacy to leave behind in case he passes on. Him being the chief of our village, he has to put his manhood to good use, so he feeds us not and despises like a broken pot. He comes home late, wasted with two other women, but with full force, and then conquers peace of the house in due course. A mama runs to seek refuge in the kitchen like bread on the toast while we are left to stare at him with fear <laughs> as if we are lost. Now here in Africa, Ababa does all these with no remorse. So, it is colder inside than outside, so I'd rather stay on the lee side. I've been holding this season of grudges for far too long, now I'm convinced Ababa is a wizard. I've been nursing my moves far from home. These mentors are bodybuilding my anger. He has made me a victim on the streets, crawling towards a brighter moon like a lizard. Sustaining in the world of burglaries, a theft and willing cruelty, my spirit is condensing to be nuns else's desired. So, I'm willing to kill that error in him that makes him disregard who family to him is, giving him reason to please the insatiable case situated below where his belly button is, equating his stupidity to the length he thinks his manhood size is, marital kids being substituted by some crazy desire that is based on where he thinks his forefathers is. So, Ababa, lower yourself like a righteous brother, because I'm coming home to teach you how to behave like a responsible father. Respect our mother, her dignity, and the kiss she has like a panther. Seal your dozen man who the pity is in a cage, Ababa, you have to appear different from the rest of these reckless fathers. Woo!